child in Texas has died from the measles, and this morning there's a warning about a measles exposure at LAX. A baby infected with the virus arrived at Terminal B on February 19th. Joining me now to talk more about the measles is Dr. Diane Hess, the medical director of Highland Modern Medicine. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. Thank you for having me. You know, I know that the measles vaccine is effective, but I was uh, curious to read this morning that even if you have the vaccine, there is the potential if you're exposed, you can get the measles. Can you break this down for us? Sure. So the first dose, which you usually get between 12 and 15 months, is about 93% effective. The second dose brings you up to 97%. However, we have lots of people who are on immunosuppressive drugs, so that makes them more susceptible, it makes the vaccine less effective, and also people who are born between 1957, their vaccine starts to wait. It, can you tell me who is most susceptible here? You just listed a couple, but I was also reading sure. like pregnant women and other people. Well, pregnant women, if they're vaccinated, they're not more susceptible, but if they get it and they're unvaccinated, it could be really harmful to their pregnancy. They can have an early um, early birth, and they could also have very low, low weight babies. Um, but unvaccinated is basically the highest risk. So any baby that's below 12 months of age who has not gotten their MMR is ex extremely susceptible. Can you go through the symptoms of measles? We're showing on the screen right now kind of that rash sure. that everybody thinks of, but there sure. are many symptoms that can appear before uh, that rash exactly. shows up. Yeah, so they can get fever, cough, runny nose, but what's really classic of measles is like red, red eyes. So mm. this kind of watery conjunctivitis, and they also get these spots on the inside of their mouth that are called coplic spots. So that, it, honestly, I've never seen it because I've never seen a real case of measles. I've only seen post-measles encephalitis, ah. but that's what you're supposed to look for. Um, and then the rash only comes out three to five days after the measles symptoms start. And as and I, the rash goes, sorry. No, sorry. no, I, I, the rash goes, I, continue please. It starts from the ears, behind the ears and the neck and works its way down. Okay, and you just talked about encephalitis. I mean, this can be a very deadly uh, situation. Yes, so one in five people who are infected with measles will end up in the hospital. Um, it's extremely contagious. It is uh, life-threatening. We've seen one case already of a, a child who died in Texas from it. This is, uh, this is not a joke. One in 20 will get pneumonia. It is a terrible, terrible, extremely contagious disease. And it's something we have a vaccine for. Yes. So if you've been exposed and um, your child is not vaccinated, within 72 hours, you should seek that MMR vaccine and get your child vaccinated. Is there any other advice that you, you have for people here besides, you know, get, get the vaccine? Get the vaccine. Make sure you know um, you keep up with public health that's in your, in your neighborhood and listen to the news. If you have been exposed, there's nothing wrong with contacting your doctor and asking a question. If you're worried that your child didn't get the vaccine, call your physician and ask. If you're worried that you're on a drug that might make you immunosuppressed, call your doctor and get a booster. And the other thing is, is we can vaccinate six month babies. Oh. So even if, they, if, even if they're not one, but they've been exposed, we can give the vaccine to a six month old. They'll still need the vaccine again at one year, but we can. And if you're traveling to an area where there is an uh, epidemic, please get the vaccine for that baby that's over six months old. Well, that's how concerning is it to you as a doctor to hear that we are having an outbreak like this and now there's a baby that has been, uh, you know, they've diagnosed at LAX going through LAX. You know, it's, it's terrifying. It's everything that we've worked for, you know, especially as pediatricians when we want to vaccinate, we want to keep our patients healthy. And I always say vaccine refusal is a first world problem. You, you can go, I do a lot of missions and I go to third world countries and people line up for miles and walk for miles to get their children vaccinated. It's when you have not seen childhood death. Go to a cemetery, you know, before vaccines were invented and see all the little coffin, you know, the little coffin shaped um, stones there of all the infants who died before we had vaccines. And then when you hear misinformation, like when RFK, uh, RFK Jr. spoke to President Trump, he said that the patients were immunized, uh, sorry, the patients were hospitalized to quarantine them. No, they were hospitalized because they were sick. If mm. you're quarantined, you're at home. All right. So there's a lot of misinformation. Yeah, uh, that's, thank mm -hmm. you for clarifying that this mm -hmm. morning. Dr. Hess, thanks yes. for joining us as well. Mm -hmm. We appreciate it. Okay, thank you.